My people, War Within is ramping up, and they're taking us back into the shop for some more rework again, which is good because we could use it. Now, right out the gate, it's important to state that Holy Pally is always awesome, spectacular, and without peer, period. And it's most certainly, even with its problems, viable. Uh, there are people that play the Holy Pally at the highest ratings in every aspect of the game. But even many of those people will tell you it's got some problems at the moment. The first problem is Holy Power. So Holy Paladins use abilities and we generate Holy Power. And then that gives us access to our spenders. However, our spenders also cost mana. So they cost holy power, and mana. Right away, you question, why can't it just cost mana? On top of that, when you hit the ability, whether it's Word of Glory, Light of Dawn, or Shield of the Righteous, it's a little lackluster. It doesn't really feel great to hit. It's not very powerful. Also, whereas other combo point classes can generate more combo points and spend those combo points to either increase the effectiveness or duration or some buff to the spell they're using. Holy Power is ultimately just a requirement for Holy Paladins. If I build up five Holy Power and I want to spend all five of it on a big spell, I can't do that. I can just spend three on my Instacast heal that just heals. And so having to generate and spend holy power and mana is awkward. Another problem holy paladins currently face is that oftentimes it doesn't feel that good to press our healing buttons. If you consider something like holy shock and I heal myself, well, that was a crit for 70,000, but even that 70,000 relative to the amount of damage going out in PVE and most certainly PVP is laughable. So there are times when as a Holy Paladin, you're hitting your ability. See, there it is. 36K is the average. And it doesn't feel like the healing is having any effect on the target that's being blown up. Part of the problem with Holy Paladin healing numbers is that when they account for Holy Pally healing, they always have to account for beacon healing. So when we put our beacons up on targets, and then when we heal... Not only does the target we're healing get that heal, but the beacons get a percentage of it. And because they get such a large percent of our healing, then it, it forces Blizzard to keep our healing in a, I think, a little bit of a nurse state. Now, there are times when, say, you're taking rot damage or there's just AoE damage going out everywhere or multiple targets are getting hit where beacon can be a real blessing. But there are also times when there's only one target taking a bunch of damage and no one else is taking damage and then the beacon healing is rather wasted. And so beacon is both a blessing and a curse in regards to Holy Pally healing because it forces Blizzard to nerf our healing to account for the fact that we're healing multiple targets consistently. But there are times when our ability to heal multiple targets really isn't needed. And so that's at least part of the problem with our buttons not feeling great to press. The last, I think, core problem with Holy Pally's current version is that it has a spec identity crisis. If you don't know, you can come over here and change this to Avenging Wrath Might that turns your wings, basically gives you more crit chance, or you can go this, what they call Melee Wings or Avenging Crusader, which makes it so that when you pop your wings, your damaging abilities become healing abilities, such as Judgment and Crusader Strike. And if you look on Murloc.io or any of the other websites that tracks what the top players are running, you'll notice that right now, almost every high-level Paladin, whether it's PvE or PvP, is running the caster version of Holy Pally. It's presented as choice, but it often really just comes down to balance. And historically, unfortunately, Blizzard is more than comfortable 
with letting specs and imbalance run for whole seasons at times. I mean, they'll just leave a spec that obviously needs a lot of tuning. Frost DK, for example, has suffered this fate several times, and they'll just leave it for the whole season. If you're going to have these types of options, you've really got to keep your finger on the pulse and maintain your tuning, and Blizzard has just consistently shown that they're unwilling to do that at times. Sometimes they're kicking out patch after patch, and then it seems some seasons they just take the patch off. It's hard to know exactly what you're going to get. If they come in here and they buffed up this Avenging Crusader and Veneration and all the things that play into it, well, then you might see Melee Pally return. But again, it's going to be based upon balance rather than choice. And in PvP, this idea is just laughable in a game where you've given every class two stuns, a fear, a uh, range interrupt. I mean, if a paladin pops melee wings and runs into the middle of a big fight to heal, he's just going to get spam cycloned, stunned, CC'd. It, it, it's just nonstop, the CC that flows on healers in this game. And so in that sense, the theme of melee wings doesn't account well for the gameplay in Retail WoW. Are we going to be casters? Are we going to be melee wings? Ultimately, Blizzards decides. I do like to run melee wings. I mean, I like to run it in world content, time walking dungeons, in casual content. I very much enjoy it. There's a little bit of a spec identity crisis here. And honestly, the community seems rather split on which they would prefer. It's a pretty complicated problem. So that's the overview of what I see as the major problems with Holy Paladin right now. Holy Power spenders costing both Holy Power and mana, and then being a little lackluster when you do use them. Pressing buttons and using your healing abilities often doesn't feel that impactful. And the spec identity crisis where we're not really sure which spec Blizzard's choosing for us each patch. I think those are some of the main problems causing frustration in the Holy Pally community right now. But here comes Blizzard with some ideas on how to tune up the class. The first one is they want to replace the Light of the Martyr talent and the one below it to a passive spell. There's also a Blessing of Summer rework right here. When I was telling you about the Blessing and Curse aspect of Beacon of Light, it looks like they've identified that and they'd like to move or nerf the Beacon healing and move that healing back into your direct spells so that they feel better to push. And then here they explain their ideas on why they want to change Light of the Martyr. So let's take these from the top. If you're not familiar with Light of the Martyr, it's an insta-cast heal that you can grab over here on the right of the tree. Uh, and it's got this sacrifice theme to it. So you hit it and you can even spam it into someone. But every time you heal them, you take damage. Also, unlike your other healing spells, when you heal with Light of the Martyr or who you heal with Light of the Martyr, they're the only person that gets to heal. None of your beacon targets receive any of the healing. Where it was really nice was when you were out of Holy Shock charges and your judgment was on cooldown and you needed to get someone healed up, at least stabilized, you could spam some Light of the Martyr in them. And then down here, Untempered Dedication, makes it so that every time you pressed it, it would stack up and get stronger and stronger, but the damage would get worse and worse each time. So you could really pump someone up, but you'd really take your health down. The big issue with this is that first it added another ability to your bar, and Blizzard's really trying to, I think, not add more abilities because I think they've realized we're kind of at that point where we've got enough. And then just the reality of the situation, if we look at Mythic Plus here on Murloc IO, you can come down and see not one of the top 50 Holy Paladins uses this spell or this passive that boost it. Not one. And it's the same if you come into Solo Shuffle where you would think having that kind of ability would be really nice. Not one. And so Light of the Martyr, kind of a cool idea. No one uses it. it really seemed like the Holy Pally tree kind of stopped right here for most of us. And no one really came over here. So what did they do? They decided to replace Light of the Martyr with a passive spell, but keep the same thematic 
sacrifice theme. And so now it's going to be a passive where when you're above 80% health, your holy shock, which when I talked about not feeling real good to hit holy shock sometimes, well, that healing is going to be increased by 20%. But when you are above 80% health and you've got this increase to holy shock, which I imagine it's going to be some buff you get that shows, hey, you're in light of the martyr mode here. It's going to create a heal absorb on you for 30% of the amount healed. So this is where that cost comes in. And that 30% heal absorb is going to prevent you from getting beacon of light healing until it's dissipated. So you get to pump these powerful holy shocks into your target, but you're going to create an, a heal absorb on yourself that prevents speaking of light healing until you, I guess, heal it off of you or use up that heal absorb. And then this untempered dedication that buffed up light of the martyr healing and damage goes away. And now we get this bestow light where now your light of the martyr threshold is reduced to 70% from 80 So you're going to be able to get this Light of the Martyr buff at 70% instead of 80% health. And it's also going to further increase Holy Shock's healing by 5% every 5 seconds while your Light of the Martyr is active, stacking up to 3 times. So a total of up to 35% Holy Shock healing. However, 30% of the amount you do with that Holy Shock healing now comes on you as an absorb you got to get through before you can receive Beacon healing. So there's that trade-off aspect of it. But one cool feature here is if you drop below 70% and you lose this Light of the Martyr passive, then the light urgently heals you every one second. I mean, if you just get to automatically put a hot on yourself that heals you every one second, I mean, you can imagine if this is going off and tears and or other heals going off around you, that could be a lot of healing. I mean, I don't know exactly what this healing is going to be. Also, do remember, you could have a pretty big absorb on you. It'll be interesting to see this play out in the game. It's hard to say without being able to test it. I think these are very cool changes. They definitely kept the trade-off theme, but now it feels like the positive is very positive. I mean, a 35% increase to Holy Shock healing on top of the 15% it's getting down here, that's incredible. And that's definitely going to address what I talked about, it not feeling real good to press. I like this change. It sounds really great. And I don't know what this heal every second is going to be, but it's kind of cool to have a passive heal that procs when you're below 70% health is never a bad thing to have on a healer. We'll have to see what it's like managing this heal absorb. It sounds pretty manageable from what I'm reading. Very nice change. I'm very excited about this. This sounds awesome. I think it sounds great. We'll see what happens when the rubber meets the road, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy. And remember when I talked about how Beacon is both a blessing and a curse and it forces Blizzard to reduce the power of our spells because they're always healing multiple targets? Well... They've identified that problem as well, and they're going to nerf the beacon healing a little bit and put that throughput into our actual spells in an attempt to make direct healing feel punchier. What did I tell you? One of the problems is hitting your ability sometimes doesn't feel good. They're trying to address that. If you look right here, Beacon of Light and Beacon of Virtue, which is our AoE beacon, they're both getting a healing reduction of 10%, so from 25 down to 15, Virtue from 25 down to 15. And to compensate for that, Holy Shock and Light of Dawn are getting a 15% healing increase. So we lose 10% on the beacon transfer, but we gain a 15% increase here. Boy, if you stack this 15% on top of this 35%, you could have some crazy Holy Shocks. Could feel really good to hit Holy Shock. On top of, if you add the hero talents in, which I've discussed in other videos, wow, it seems like Holy Paladin could get feel a lot more dynamic when it's healing. And then look down here, Tears Deliverance getting a 32% increase. I already feel like Tears is a very powerful cooldown. A 32% increase seems incredible. So I don't know what this actually comes out to as a nerf. I mean, we're getting a 10% nerf, but we're getting a 15% increase here. You're getting more of an increase here if you grab this town. I don't know what that actually plays into, how much this is going to nerf the transfer healing into Beacon. But it, it's probably for the best, to be honest, in my opinion. 
uh, because you want what the target you're healing to be healed. And having passive healing through beacon and stuff is awesome. It's very thematic and one of the things I love about paladins. But there are times when you get no benefit from your beacon healing. And so then you're kind of just this nerfed healer. I'm very happy with this change. I know it'll upset some people because Beacon is just such a staple of Paladin healing, but I've been healing on a Paladin for a long time and Beacon is either hot or cold, especially in PvP. And what I really want to be able to do as a healer is whatever target I'm healing, I want their health bar to go up a lot. And I want to have power to do that. It can still be a part of our kit, but our kit doesn't have to be completely tied to it. I think that's a nice change. They've also moved some things around in the talent tree. You'll see right here, first off, they removed the ability Light's Hammer. And that's kind of sad because Light's Hammer is awesome. You throw it down, look at that animation. And then everybody's getting healing in that big circle. When you put it down, almost guarantees that a boss ability uh, is going to be put right on top of it or you know, people are going to run out of it. But I still think it's just an awesome animation and I'm sad to see it go just for that animation alone. And they're moving Barrier of Faith to where it used to be. Currently, you pick between Barrier of Faith and Reclamation and what they're doing is they're moving Tears Deliverance up to here. Reclamation will branch off down here just as its own talent and then you're going to have to pick between Barrier of Faith and or Holy Prism. And you can see that right here. There's Reclamation branching off. Here's your barrier or your holy prism, whichever one you choose. And so that's the talent tree changes that are being made. And then last thing is we've got this blessing of summer rework. Current blessing of summer, you target someone and you throw it on them. And that for 30 seconds, their attacks have a 40% chance to deal 20% additional damage as holy damage. A wonderful ability in PvP. The reworked version is going to convert 20% of healing into damage on a nearby enemy. And 10% of damage will be converted into healing on an injured ally. You could see where this would be amazing in melee wings. Where you're already converting damage into healing. So you pop this on yourself and then you hit Avenging Crusader and you get to work. And you're going to be putting out more damage, more healing. You could also see where a blood DK would adore this ability. So I'm definitely going to have to grab some blood DK tanks and my Mythic Plus runs and throw, throw this on them. Because I think we could have a real match made in heaven with this buff and a blood DK. Overall, I think these changes are really great. They do address... What I talked about, how the spells don't feel that punchy. Well, here they're making them punchier. A little nerf to Beacon, but with an increase in healing, I, I don't know what that'll really play out to be. I think it would be all right. And then, I mean, a 32% increase to Tears. What a cooldown, you know? And on top of the Blessing of Summer rework, it sounds pretty cool. It'll work. Whether it'll be as great as the old one or not, I don't know. I'll have to get around and play with it, but it sounds pretty impressive. And it definitely seems a little more thematic to healing rather than just buffing up someone's damage randomly. I think it's a cool design. And the Light of the Martyr passive and, and new ability that buffs it up even more, I think is outstanding. I mean, this was an ability that they really couldn't do anything wrong with because no one used it anyway. But this sounds pretty impressive to me, especially when you account for when it drops off, you get this heal every second. I mean, I don't know what that's going to be, but that's, that's a nice thing to have on a healer that's taking damage pretty consistently, especially in PvP. Being below 70% health and having a passive heal every second, uh, I I'm in. I think these changes are pretty great, and uh, I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. Now, none of this addresses the holy power spender issue that I talked about earlier, but when you add these changes on top of bringing in these Herald of the Sun talents, these hero talents dress up and impact your spenders. I mean, the whole idea is that you get these dawn lights from using your spenders on targets. And also, remember I said WOG is kind of boring. Well, this is going to replace your word of glory and give it an additional hot over time. 
So there's some interactions coming in that are going to dress up and I think make spending holy power feel better and more impactful and just more fun. If you take those hero talents and you throw these changes in on top of it, your holy power spender problems addressed. I mean, it still costs mana and holy power, which is awkward, but it's just what they have to do for balance, I guess. So it is what it is. And then the spells not feeling that good to press. Seems like they're trying to address that issue. The only other thing is just identity. And again, that's really just going to come down more to balance, I think, than talents or talent adjustments. It's just how do they tune this thing? What's going to be more souped up is what it comes down to sometimes. So we'll just have to wait and see on that front. One of the things I pride myself on is I give you my honest opinion. If I think something sucks, I think it sucks. But I think on this talent front, these are outstanding changes. Good job, Blizz. I think they've really got a pretty good eye on most of the problems. And these changes sound pretty exciting to me. And I think I'm, I'm more than happy with these changes. I expect people to panic about Beacon a little bit. But overall, I think we're going to be okay. And like I said, you throw the hero talents on top of it. And I think we could be shining like the kings we are. However, it is always a day of mourning when a paladin loses a hammer. And so, it is with a heavy heart that we must say goodbye to our beloved Light's Hammer in honor of its great service to our holy order. I've written a few words. Light's Hammer, Light's Hammer, your train has left the station. Light's Hammer, Light's Hammer, a spectacular animation. When you get to heaven, you deserve a mansion. But we'll probably get you back in the next expansion. Oklahoma out.